Yes, sir. Welcome to episode 84 of the Everything NYJ podcast. Liam, Italy Jet, and our good friend, Boy Green. How you doing, Paul? Well, I'm doing amazing. I just corrected it wrong just as this show was starting because I, I had thought that I had done this some time ago because I think Italy was talking about it on the side. But I just properly followed you guys on Twitter. So I don't know what, what was the effing hold up there. But uh, I just went because like, I, like for our names on StreamYard, right, we see our names and our handles. Right. And, that, and the handle looked familiar, but I'm like, man, I haven't seen that in a while. And I went boop, 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 boop. And I went, oh, beep, boop. And I had to make sure we corrected that wrong. So we had to start with good vibes at the beginning of the show, yes, right? right. You, you right. Know, just got the food. notification. Yeah, yeah. Boo, you're, you're welcome. God bless. So I'll, I'll sign it if you send it. So booyah. We had to make sure we got that done right away. Absolutely. <laughs> so I'm fired up. I Hopefully you guys are fired up. Let's do this, puppy. Love it. Dude, I, I am so Love fired it. up, but I guess we're going to get right into it. There's actually not some uh, some not so great news in Jets land. You know, we got some Quinn and Williams drama. We got Quan Alexander uh, visiting the Boo uh, Steelers. What are your thoughts yeah. on all of this? All right, let's go through a couple. So we'll start with the Quan news first. So um, sure. he's visiting, uh, you know, uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers. There, there it is on the screen. He's visiting the Pittsburgh Steelers. So Adam Schefter on that this morning. Um, there's been a lot of rumors of like, you know, a team like the Raiders or the Titans or another team could potentially be interested. Uh, it could potentially be interested. I'm sorry. I'm just somewhat distracted. Yeah. Can you, uh, thank you. I I appreciate that. All right. Anywho, (laughs) sorry. That was the weirdest thing in history. So I'm coming into your house. Um, so (laughs) that's the weirdest thing that's ever happened in my life. We'll be back after these messages. Yeah. Right. Uh, wrong house. Uh, that was weird. Okay. Anywho, uh, yeah. Quan Alexander, that has never happened in my life. I I think Boy Green's getting broken into on the show. (laughs) That's what I thought. And I was like, uh, can you come back later? Yeah. A different time, perhaps. uh, There's someone crawling through your window. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that was odd. They're looking straight on that way. Anywho, yeah, so Quan Alexander visiting uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers. There's been some flirtation with teams like the Raiders, and there's been a few other teams just kind of hanging in the middle of uh, that could chase Quan. But, like, this is real, like him going to visit another team. So I started to reach out to some Steelers people to see, you know, because I don't know the intricate details of every team. Like, every team's, be- you know, biggest weakness is this or this or this. So I dug in, and they're kind of in the same spot as the Jets. They, they have a couple of starters they feel good about, but – you know, in terms of the depth, there isn't proven depth. There's no proven depth with the Jets. So, you know, I'm hoping this is a, uh, you know, hopefully the Jets get this opportunity. Obviously, we don't hear about the Quan signing some point tonight or tomorrow morning or something. Like, I hope that a big thing here involved in all this is that it's pressure like the Jets are like, okay, we can't mess around. Let's go lock in Quan. Because what are we talking about? He signed for $1.1 million last year. Chump change. Great for us. But, I mean, chump change for the Jets. They can find it in their couch cushions. And I think he deserves a pay raise because last year he appeared in a full season for the first time since 2016. So there's a, you want to give him pay raise, double his pay, triple his pay. We're still talking relative peanuts to the overall picture. And Robert Sala made it a point at the beginning of the offseason to say he wants to retain as many people as possible on defense. And we're chasing the thing. And Quan's a great leader. Um, he, he delivered when he was on the field. He appeared in 17 games but made 12 starts. And my biggest question, I investigated it in a recent column for uh, Heavy.com, is what happens if C.J. Mosley gets hurt? What happens if Quincy Williams gets hurt? We are just one injury away, boys, from, and no offense to these guys, but they're unproven. Zaire Barnes, Hamza Nasruddin, Jamie and Sherwood? Like, I- I'm pulling it. Chaz Surratt? Like, what the hell? Like, come on, man. This is a defense that people say is Super Bowl ready. So to start off with the Quan note, like, man. That to me would scare me enough into paying the price. Now, I'm not saying you have to give him 54 million like he got a couple of years ago um, in 49ers land, but geez, like Jet fans are begging for this. Like, let's fill an obvious hole with a guy who wants to be there. And he's tweeted a couple of weeks ago, hey, they've got my number, like saying the ball's in the Jets court. I, I, I'd love to be there, but hey, I, my phone ain't ringing. So, uh, right off the get go uh, from that, uh, Liam, the the Quan situation is kind of sad. Again, it's not. I get it. It's not Aaron Rodgers. It's not like the biggest yeah. move in the world. But for Jet fans, I think it would quench a thirst uh, in terms of that linebacker hole. And um, you know, jumping over to your Quinnin question real quick. In a general sense, it's just Jet fans don't want to see it. We don't want to see that, you know, the best player on the team, right? You see that first graphic, their defensive tackle for a bunch of dots. It used to be New York Jets. And now I hadn't heard of that one, but good for uh, Italy Jet here that he's not even following the Jets now. So another social media thing, I hadn't heard about that one. But, you know, (laughs) 
<laughs> so there's another pie on top of that, I suppose. But it's just yeah. like, it's just weird. It's just stuff we don't want to see. The Jets need to pay their guy. They need to take care of business. And I just was going through some YouTube comments before coming on the show. And uh, someone dropped on, I had Henry McKenna, who broke the uh, price tag story earlier today, which was nice out of Fox Sports. So it was cool to chat to him. But, you know, people were commenting under, well, we paid Muhammad Wilkerson and that didn't work out. So you're just never going to pay a homegrown talent ever again. <laughs> like you're just afraid to, to get burned again. Like I remember that one stunk because Jet fans were rooting for that as a hometown kid. But like you can't be afraid to pay somebody. He's earned his right. You can't let ghost of the past haunt you today. So I really hope the Jets, you know, figure out their crap, quite frankly, and pay the man. He's well worth it, and the market's there. Everything's lined up there. I know that's a very long-winded way to answer all these questions, but, yeah, right off the top, that one's a frustrating one to me for sure. And at the same time, it's like I know this is the era of, you know, players putting it to social media, right? Of course. We haven't seen this, like, this bad probably with the Jets and since Jamal Adams. And yeah. then all of a sudden, you know, then you go to Marcus May and then you go to, you know, we paid Wilkerson, but then look what happened. It didn't really work out. And then now, now we're experiencing it with Q. It, I'm at that point where I'm like, I'm not freaking out yet, but I don't want to see this crap now. It's like, I understand he's nicknamed Big Baby. I know, I, I you know, back as Alabama days, he's nicknamed Big Baby because I'm an Alabama fan. So if he's living up to that, I want him to live up to that. But I'm not going to freak out until the um, until the end of May when they have to report. So that's fair. I I think, but it's still not good to see, especially right. with Quan. You know, Quan. I understand that you know Joe Douglas has said a lot of times that he has a lot of faith in, in Barnes, Nazardine, Sherwood, and they got Surrett, right? That, um, yeah, yeah, they got Chesra, Surratt. and then the and then the um the like rookies one Barnes out of Western Michigan. Yeah, he was a day three. Player. Yeah, so those are the so, uh, those are the guys in competition. Yes. So it, I I understand they might want to go a route there, but CJ Mosley's getting older, and then Quincy, you never know he's going to be hot and cold. So for now, I'm like, okay, let's just get back on track. Hopefully, this gets done before because I could see Quinnen not going the summertime. He's even made it known. He's got a baby on the way. Yeah, so yeah. if that happens, could you see this going in the summertime, Paul? Oh, boy. I feel like I feel similar to you, Italy, that, uh, you know, when you start, like, worrying about it, because technically the Jets practices, my days may be off a little, but it's coming this week is when practices start. It's like May 18th range. It's that Thursday. Yeah. And then they have basically two weeks of practices, which, again, is why it was important on the Aaron Rodder, important in quotations, but relatively important that if he could be there, why not be there for those practices? So you got, like, two mm-hmm. weeks of practices and then mandatory minicamp, mm-hmm. which is – the middle of the first week of June, and then they're gone for a month and a half. Although it's a little less than that because we have the uh, Hall of Fame game this year. So camp, it's right. not official yet, but camp is supposed to open like July 16th, 17th. So you're talking about like a month and change of time that's supposed to happen there. So to circle back to your question, the hard knocks, are we getting a Roscoe Diner, Quinn and Williams situation? <laughs> God, I hope not. I feel like ultimately cooler heads prevail here. Like, it, would it be cool to have him at these practices that are about to start in a handful of days? Of course. But, like, he's Quentin Williams. If he's there or not there, it doesn't really move the needle. Like, we'd like him to be there in a perfect world, but what I want him there, the biggest one for me is training camp. And there's a lot of time between now and training camp to figure this out. And, again, I think the easiest part of this, easy for me to say, I guess, from my couch over here, but the thing for me is that the market's <laughs> established. What are we talking about here? Jeffrey Simmons got paid. Dexter Lawrence got paid. Deron Payne got paid. And he's going to edge all of those guys, and deservedly so. He deserves every penny he could get. Yeah. But, like, yeah. he's going to be the number two highest-paid defensive tackle. No shame in that game. Making $25 million per year on a multi-year deal. And I will just lay it on the line here. That would be the richest contract in Jets history the richest contract per year in in Jets history, and the richest and most guaranteed Jets contract in history. C.J. Mosley holds all of those barometers. Those will all be annihilated by Quentin Williams' contract. So ultimately, it could. Of course, it always can. You can never say never in this business, Italy. But uh, I believe that 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 gets hammered out. In that darkness period, pun intended, I guess, by accident, but like, you know, <laughs> yeah. that, that darkness period of like in the middle of after mandatory minicamp and training camp, they just figure it out. Joe Douglas, Nicole Lane, get in a room and say, okay, let's just figure this thing out. 
Mm. Yeah, definitely. And like like you said, it's it's all just like contract like negotiations. I mean, on our show, uh, Italy Jet, his nickname is Big Baby, and y- you should see the contract <laughs> struggles I have with him. <laughs> when was this? Wow! When okay. was you know. this? Wow! I think I need to go on a darkness retreat now. Apparently, <laughs> I'm seeing that but, already. Jump into the car- comments here. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I, I have a feeling wow. that they're just trying to get this Roger restructure done and everything. And then I'm seeing reports anywhere from. I I originally thought it was going to be between twenty and twenty five million. Now I'm seeing twenty five to thirty million. What is your absolute cap? Are you willing to go up to thirty million, or is there a, a deal that you wouldn't do? Hey, I will say this, and I said it on my show earlier today. YouTube.com uh, slash boy green two five baby branding 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 branding. <laughs> yeah, very, important, very important. Mm-hmm. Very important. Very important. But uh, I, I said last year, like. Jet fans, hey, how about this? Let's be proactive. Let's pay Quinn right now on a four or five year deal. He's 24 years old at the time. He's 25 now. Let's give him four or five year deal for about mm, 20, 21 mil a year. Like Jet fans, let's do it. Let's rally. Jet mm-hmm. fans called me idiot. They said I should stop doing <laughs> Jets content creation in general. That's the stupidest thing they've ever heard. And he will never get that kind of money and called him a quote unquote Jets draft bust. And I went, oh, well, okay. All right, let's see the season. Now, of course, as you just uh, hinted at, Liam, that the real conversation is, whoo, that, that number ain't 2021 20, anymore. That number is 25 plus. So okay. to circle back to it, I am more than comfortable giving $25 million a year right now from, you know, which, again, we're making the second highest paid defense tackle football. I have no bones about making him clearly number two. Now, the number two right now technically is Jeffrey Simmons, who just got his deal. According to the APY, the average per year, it's 23 and a half. Now, those numbers can sometimes get contorted and messed up. Like DeAndre Hopkins, when he got his mini extension, he was briefly making $30 million a year, which kind of threw off the wide receiver market back then. So, like, sometimes it's not the best barometer, but he's making 23 and a half, Jeffrey Simmons. I am more right. than comfortable making Quinn in, not even nickel and diming, like a million and a half. I'm willing to you know, boop, put that floor right there and let's talk. Now, you mentioned the 30 million number, which is getting closer to the Aaron Donald yeah. conversation. Yeah. I mean, Quinn, it's dynamic. And if you think about it, the contract you're going to give him is four or five years. You could play it either way. It's what the true guarantees matter anyway. That means he's going to see through his contract before he's 30. I feel if I'm the Jets and you believe in him anyway, which obviously they do. Then of course, you know, let's give him a four or five year deal, and then he could. It works out for everybody. The Jets pay their guy reputation around the league. Look, we pay our people. Number one, number two, Quinn gets his right. money. He hasn't been paid yet. Again, no one's crying him rivers for the millions he's already made as a third overall pick. But like his true value, he gets that. And then before he's thirty, I want another mega deal, four or five years for the same price, or maybe even higher by the time we get to whatever that would be, 2027, 2028. So like, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So, so that's the point that the market can change at that point. So I really don't necessarily say, oh man, here's the line and that's it. Now it's probably a good thing. Jet fans are like, thank God you're not at the negotiating table. You freak because you'd be giving him too much tag. <laughs> but I just think that he deserves it. He's so freaking good. I am so good with him getting 25 billion plus a year. He's dynamic. And man, at 25, I feel like there's more, to go the prime is coming i don't even think he's in his prime right now i think there's more prime to be acquired depending on the people you talk to 27 you know that 27 and a half is when you're truly kind of you know really becoming a man and really kind of f- coming into your own and you, you got that big boy country strength and stuff like that so like yeah. i still think there's more quinn to be tapped you had 12 sacks last year and he missed a game like and he could have had more I, I really think uh, there's so much more potential here for Quinn. And so, no, Liam, to your point, I don't think there's really a line. I don't think he has to get paid more than Aaron Donald, but he has every right to be in the conversation based on stats, analytics, all pro nod, everything else. And he is very important. I mean, like also you mentioned when he missed the game, that obviously that Lions game, it's like the defense couldn't even show up. So, you right. know, he, he's really he's really an anchor of the defense. So you know, he's a lot more than just a player. So maybe to your point, Liam, instead of pointing to the tape where he's actually an all-pro, he points to the tape when he wasn't on the field and say, hey, you think I'm good. Well, what happened there? As soon as you remove me, you know, dippity-boppity-boop, your defense sucked, pal. So you move me out of the picture, look all of a sudden what was gone there. So you're right. Maybe he points to that, the negotiating table, not him sacking quarterback, him saying, hey, look at you guys not sacking guys when I was out of the game. It's a good point. It's true. Can you remember – 
I, I just keep thinking the like it seems like everything blows up on a Monday now, Paul. Yeah, like it just blows up everything weird, on a Monday. Yeah, right. I had a good Mother's Day weekend, and all of a sudden hmm. this happens on a Monday. So I just keep thinking the past four or five hours that I'm like, is there an any other first round pick or any Jets player that we have signed to an extension like this that's big money that has gotten better? Each and every year, I can't think of anyone besides Quentin Williams. Is there a name that comes to your mind? So a a first round pick the Jets made, and then as they went through the rookie contract, they kept getting exponentially better. And, and, and not yes, not only that, or just a player in our draft picks, even mm. second, third, fourth, fifth round, because they haven't been staying too long. Well, that's us. true. That that's true. I'm I, I, I mean that's the honest truth is that. Again, I, I think I had these stats a while back before Quinnen that like the last guy to get like any kind of an extension, it barely counts. Like Marcus may get the franchise tax. That doesn't count. Then he was gone. And he obviously had some of the right. off the field issues. You right. go to like a uh, Jordan Jenkins, but like, I, I mean, he came back on a weird deal that was like cheap. And then he went to the Texans. And then now he's kind of been, you know, kind of thrown around the league. Like, man, you just have to dig, which goes to show you, but to think, though, that like how you're handling these negotiations with Quinnen, you'd be crazy not to think Brees Hall, who, by the way, tweeted out Extend Q earlier yeah, today. Yeah, the hashtag. Hall, yeah. Sauce, Garrett Wilson, these young guys who know, like, again, we're still a few years away, so we don't have to get too yeah. crazy, but how can they not at least be peripherally peering at how that's going to say, hey, when it's go when when the bell rings, are you paying me? Or is there going to be all this tay-to-tay dancing yeah. in the streets? That could rub some people the wrong way. Again, I'm not trying to paint this terrible locker room or anything crazy. We're nowhere near that. It's a business. No. Yeah. Quinnen is here and his agent's here. Joe Douglas is here and nothing has happened yet. Quinnen's still under contract for another year. The Jets right. had the franchise tax. So we're not in crazy. Oh, hell no. The locker room's gone astray. We're nowhere near that yet. But I do believe sooner rather than later, you might as well pay him. Why wouldn't you pay him this offseason? Mm -hmm. It just makes the most sense. Yeah, that is definitely something. And then I, I believe it was Green Bean that was also saying that, um, like, these players aren't necessarily honoring their contracts anymore. Like, like they're holding out, but, like, you still are under contract for another year. Yeah. Like, we don't have to pay him, you know? Like, it, it's it's tricky. It really yeah, is. Th that's true. It's true, Liam. You're, you're right. And Green Bean's right. And I know he's been an, a proponent of that. Um, because again, if the Jets wanted to, they have the fifth year option. Mm -hmm. And then I, I you know, so, some people have said the rule have changed. I haven't seen it officially in the book. So the Jets either have two years of franchise tag or three years. The old rule was three years. So right. it's either three or two additional on top of that. So whatever, wherever we are in the, in the, you know, the argument of that. So they still have a minimum of three years of control of Quinnen. Now, just because you have leverage doesn't mean you should use it. Just because, like, you know, to bring it to my personal life, life right? I've got a beautiful fiance who's taking care of our uh, baby behind the scenes, right? Just because I somehow have leverage, like she messed up and like, and I'm flexing on her and holding it over her head, like, ha ha ha, sucker! See, I was right. That's gonna get me sleeping on the couch. That's not gonna get me all the things <laughs> I want. For the same thing with the Jets going, well, sucker, you're under contract, and he's like, all right, I'll throw a fit, and you want to go to the Super Bowl this year? I guess that ain't happening because I'm gonna throw, you know, a fit. I don't want any of that to happen. So again. Just because leverage exists doesn't mean it should be exercised. If the Jets want to threaten it and hopefully get a deal done, I just want a deal done. I want a deal done. Jet fans want a deal done. The show wants a deal done. Everyone wants a deal done because even going back to the Revis Roscoe Diner thing, like in that hard knock season, which was 13 years ago, which seems crazy, crazy. to think I'm, I'm so old. Crazy. Um, yeah. So you talk about that 13 years ago. They went to the AFC Championship game that year, but the Roscoe Diner thing came all the way up to the last week of the preseason going into what I believe that Jets-Ravens game week one was also Monday Night Football, which is kind of a weird connection between this year and that year. So, like, just get it done. Like, no distractions. Like, sign him. Like, if we're talking – I don't know. So we don't know – what we do know is what Quinn wants. What we don't know is what the Jets are willing to pay, which was an earlier question by you, Liam. So, like, we don't yeah. know that, so I'm speculating. But if Quinn says, I want 27 and a half, and the Jets go, well, we're not going above 26. Like, if we're talking about a million and a half per year for your best player on the team, like, let's go F it and let's just do it. Like they did in the Aaron Rodgers trade ahead of the mm -hmm. draft. They said F it, fine. Pick swap this. The snap percentages, fine. We're good. They just kind of folded, and they folded to get the deal done because we don't want this to drag out in the summer. A similar thing could and should happen here at Quinnen. So I hope that they do it because, again, it's time to get a deal done. He's just too important uh, to the puzzle. Right, right. right. Well, well, first off, listen, pal. 
If you ever get sent to the couch, yes. I'm building a very nice doghouse. I we we ah. live in the doghouse. Italy is always invited. You're always Excellent. invited. It's a great place. Um, options are good. Thank but, you. I appreciate that. Yeah, you know. So yeah, exactly. You have your options. You know, you're a little mm. ways away from I am, but you know, we can yeah. make it work. Excellent. But do you, do you think if the Jets do just decide to franchise tag him, it's really going to piss him off? Yeah, I, well, I, I think I think that definitely would. Well, it would. Like I said, we have at least this fifth year option, so it's not like he's unsigned right now. Right now, he's on the fifth year option, so he is under contract through this upcoming season. So I think ultimately, if they really say and pushed Quinnen up against it, the new CBA punishes Quinnen and any player for that matter that is under contract and they try to hold out. Now, the loophole that you're speaking of is next offseason. Next offseason, if the Jets put the franchise tag on him, technically, until he signs it, he is unsigned. And what I mean by that is they you can't find a player that's not under contract. So he could do the Le'Veon Bell, which, again, didn't really work out for him in the long game. But but he could do that, and the Jets couldn't find him. That's where he gets into the mythical land. There's nothing they can do at that point except, like, get angry about it and and then maybe fan vitriol and stuff like that. So I do believe it would make him angry because obviously while the, there's pros and cons to everything in life, but the pros and cons of the franchise tag is you get a nice pay raise, which he would get from the fifth year option, but also it's one year. And if he blows out his Achilles in either in the middle of that season or what have you, then all of a sudden the Jets are like, hey, you know that offer we had of 26 and a half million? It's actually 20 million. And that's the harsh reality of the business. So, yes, if I was winning at that point, I'd be pissed. And then, again, try to hold out to try to get my long-term deal. Because if you blow out your Achilles, again, you never want that to happen. At that point, that's when you could say, well, at least I could fall back on this security for me and my family. His child that is either set to be born or has been born in the last bit here is, uh, I believe he has a daughter coming at any moment here. So, uh, again, he has to secure the bag. But, yes, bluntly to your question, I think that would make him angry. Thankfully, that is a 2024 offseason concern at this point. Cool. I couldn't, Italy. I couldn't agree more. And honestly, now I'm sick and tired of talking about it. So yeah, here's fair enough. here here's where I want to go. And yes. I am actually really can I, mad. can I just stop you for a second here? Oh, uh, here oh, Mr. Unreliable. Go ahead. <laughs> no, 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 no. It, it's ahead. it's on you. We don't want any problems. So just look at the <laughs> just take a look. Oh, in your Elmo. oh, boy, Green, have you ever heard about this? No, I have not. What, uh, okay. What's happening right Gotta now? Gotta say hi to Elmo. Yeah, sure. Gotcha. Tickle me, Elmo. Yeah, yeah, big fan. Yeah. No, Liam Liam can take it away. He'll make your life hell. Okay. He doesn't necessarily like to be tickled, this one. <laughs> no. Just say hello oh, to him. Okay. But okay. if you don't say uh, hello, hello to him, you, yeah, d- there's a very good chance if you don't say hello to him, he's going to go on to your podcast and just raise hell. Um, so oh, so it, actually, whole... I take back my hello because I'd rather get the listens. No. To be honest, you you want to be polarizing. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. You either want to be loved or hated. I don't want someone that's in the middle. So you know, I I don't really care for Boy Green one way or the other. So like then they don't click. So if he if you're if you're promising that if I don't say hello that he's going to come on my podcast, God bless, please. I, I can't promise puppet. that at, at Boy can't. Green. So hello, uh, Grover, or God knows who else. Oh uh, man, wow. Big Bird, baby. Yeah, I don't hey. know who you are. Sorry, I respect it. I'm not gonna lie. I respect it. I'm not gonna do it anymore. But I respect it. Wow. Italy, Italy went down wow. a really bad rabbit hole with this, and it got really ugly. And then he just stopped oh. showing up to our show. And then oh. you know went on. Yeah, what can you I do? saw him on another show. You know, it got it got messy. You know, wow. But okay. they, they, Which they it made up. And, does with Elmo, so that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. They, <laughs> they hugged it out. So Italy gets his hello. Everything is good in the world. I hope yes. that this doesn't yes. turn. Uh, to shit. Oh, wait. is there a picture of oh, Italy we... and Elmo hugging? Uh, no, there wanna... is not. Uh, there is so not. I, I would love to see that. That could be a profile picture, maybe. Yeah, that could um, be eventually. There's okay, a Rangers fan. I see. Yeah, yeah. Are not not a Rangers fan, so nothing to worry about Elmo there, unfortunately. So there you go. There wait, is wait, the wait. picture of Elmo and Chad Pennington, though. Yes. There is. That's what yes. I'm saying. I remember the uh, the Sesame Street. What. Uh, I, was it Eric Mangini? Who was who was part of that group? I think it was Mangini. It was Pennington. It was like the Ernie's Coles. I think Curtis, Curtis Martin. Martin. Yeah. Wasn't Curtis yeah, yeah. Martin? Curtis there Martin too? was there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a nice there's a nice group there, man. Nice group. But that's why. Yeah. Thought. So thank you for joining us, Elmo. It's always a pleasure. It yeah, is. Yeah, it's his it, Twitter yeah, profile. It yeah, it is. Oh, Twitter. okay. Yeah, it's Elmo's on Twitter too. Profile. If you ever okay. interested. Uh, I'm not, but thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But thank you. 
yeah. yeah okay. Appreciate cool. the no, I appreciate. I love it. Yeah, I love it. That's awesome. Now yeah, let's get back on track here. There we go. Yeah, pay the man definitely. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay. Now, but before, but after, after this question, I want to show you something because I think they did our guy dirty. Our what guy. Do you, what? Sure. Yeah, our our guy, which is Sauce Gardner. Okay, we all know about. Oh God! Yes, they did. Oh my illustrated. God! Illustrated. Okay. The... How awful! Come on. <laughs> That's. I mean, uncomfortable to be it's honest. It's ridiculous, dude. It looks like he's in like Scream Three movie or Scream Two. You know what I mean? Well, blood would be better than what I think a lot of people believe that <laughs> is. I would. Uh, I want to I know. I'm sure they say. Yeah. I want to know your thoughts on this. Could they could have done better, right? They I'm gonna be so better. like I see. I'll, I'll be yeah, so I'm, I'm you know like I'm a Twitter freak. I try to be on top of things as they're happening. Uh-huh. So right. I get a yeah. notification that said, "Can you believe the sauce cover?" And I'm like, "What are they talking about?" And right. I click it, and I just see the lifting hand, and I'm like, "What the fuck?" I was just excuse my Guatemala. <laughs> I don't know if we're allowed to swear on this show, yeah, but go, like, go of course, for it. yeah. But Jesus, I was like, what sauce? What happened? Like, because sauce is aware of the photo that when they yeah. say when they when the guy so sauce is there and they're like, and, and the director goes, cut, cut, cut. Sauce, here's what I want you to do. I want you to dip, <laughs> dip. I want you to dip your hand and raise it up near your face and just kind of look at us like, you know, like he's like this, you know, he's like. You know, hold the side. He's like, sure, no problem, director. I- I- I'll do that. And I'm like, what the? Like, he he should have been on the editing floor. Dark Soldier with the crew coming in the show. But like, you know, you for Pete's sake, like he uh, he has to be like his own. Like, you know, we all have to have filters in our life. And like, you know, if a director says, you know, do this, you're like, um, no, I'm sauce. The hell, I'm doing that, you freak. So he said they did him dirty, and uh, I saw sauce said that on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, bizarre. We he didn't like it at all. Yeah, he I was don't blame pissed. him. So I, I wish that if I was, you know, I, I fly on that wall. But if I'm sauce and they have that, like, I hope they were kind of keeping in contact with him because he did obviously this full length feature in the in the piece that like, hey, before you pick the front cover, kind of circle back to me to make sure it's OK. Obviously, that did not transpire. But uh, bizarre, bizarre. Ooh. Yeah, oh, yeah, no, yeah. That, that is weird. Oh, yeah. So, okay. We had the inside joke with uh, Tickle Me Elmo. Yeah. Uh, so, anywho, Dark Soldier has been, uh, I, yeah, you're right, uh, Dark Soldier. I, I just assumed everyone knew. Uh, all yeah, so about I, this guy. Oh, okay. Great. So, like on my show, some, a long time ago, before I had all the beautiful and sub- handsome subscribers that I had, uh, Dark Soldier used to come in. And I can't even remember how it started. Maybe he knows. But, like, every time he came in the chat and said anything, somehow I just screamed at the top of my lungs, Crew! That he was coming in. I don't know where that mm. started or how that happened, but every time he comes in now, any show, Jake Asman, this show, any right. Green Bean, any show, yeah. he comes up. I just randomly yell at it, and people are like, you know, like, is he off his meds? Like, what's happening there? Which, by the way, I am. I'm now out of pain yeah, killers for this ACL yes. surgery. I, I am now off those meds. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah. Right. I, I don't know how it, it started. But, yeah, there you go. Oh, see, so he started it, and then I just yelled it. So, okay, there you go. That makes And that makes sense, so. Oh, Damian Woody. Oh, that was it. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Which was an amazing show. We got to get Damian uh, back on the show. Uh, Damian was, uh, he was an absolute blast. So what a better, what better off season than this one where uh, we're all gosh darn giddy for everything that this season promises. So there you go. Dirk Schroeder with a reminder on that one. Yeah, Damian, what a, we've had a lot of great guests on the show. I'm very, very humbled to have uh, all the wonderful guests we've had on the show over the years. Definitely. Yeah, you guys are really kicking ass. Really trying to, man. We're trying to, for sure. You got like Absolutely. four different things going on. That's true. I've got too many friggin' shows. It, it's I, gonna be I'm with you, too. I'm, I'm Mr. Hollywood, yeah. As, yeah, as, yeah. as they so, call so, me. So, so, see, there you go. You need one of those. Jer- I see all those Italy jet jerseys behind you. We need we need a Hollywood one. I don't know if there's a, a spot <laughs> or something. I advocated for that. I, I know. People have anyway. said that. And I'm like, I don't know if I should do that. I don't know. Yeah, it's... What's it, uh, Help me with this. What's the 22 mean? What's the 22 I see on all these Italy Jet jerseys? So I started everything in 2022. Oh, okay. And my favorite number is 22. No, wow. Okay. I thought there was it's some just... deep, dark personal story. You're like, when I was five, I was abandoned. And then there was 22 <laughs> of it. And I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. He's just like, yeah, my favorite number is 22. Uh, I'm like, right. okay. All right. That's yeah. a simple story. I like it. it. Okay. It works. Makes sense. But yeah. it you didn't works. hear what he never told you was over yeah. his left uh, over his left shoulder about 1980. 
Oh yeah, what the, what's that? Yeah, I got to squint for that one. I don't uh, know if my glasses right. are good I enough for that. I guess I should 80, move out of way. Is that okay, the Wayne so, Corbett? Wait, Davis? Okay. Is that a Corey Davis jersey back there? Oh boy. Oh, yeah, boy. he loves Corey Davis for some reason. That's that's kind of like I mean I mean that's fine. He's a fine man, a fine human being. But I can understand why his head's normally there blocking it. I I wouldn't be proud to show that off either. I guess it's but, it's uh, yeah, strange. They, yeah, there you go. There is a bizarre collection as I'm like looking at all these jerseys on his wall. There, like, it doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason going on here. And are all the hangers different colors? Like, what's going on there? What the? What? What? Ha- you're on mute, Italy. I can't even hear what you're saying right now. But uh, you know. oh man, you hear me now? We're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get. We're good. Well, so what do we got? Teams. My teams are all over the place. Uh, and I see that. Yeah, not all of them autographed. Oh, that's cool. Oh, okay, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah okay. so that I can respect. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, I love Corey Davis. So I he's one of my favorite players, and that might get changed. It might not. I don't know yet. But I. Oh, so I you're saying Co- the door is open for Corey to be replaced? That's what oh, you're saying. The only door, only door to be. Oh, okay. Replaced. Okay. Sorry, Corey Davis. Sorry, pal. Yeah. yeah I, I hope not, though. I want him. I want him here, and I if like. If you're him, watching so. Corey, we love. Yeah. Him. Yeah, we love you, Corey. On the team don't leave. Don't leave, Corey. Has. Please don't go. leave. <laughs> there we go. But you know over... what? I... Go on, go on. You know what? You know what your background reminds me of? It reminds me of like walking into like a lids. A lids. <laughs> yeah, I actually can really see that for Italy. There is a oh yeah, there is a lids thing happening there. Well, like yeah, you, you need to see, see my closet. You see my closet. It's everywhere. Like twenty percent off. Like what's happening there? Yeah. Yeah, that's what we want to know. That's what the people want to know. Yes. Hey, I mean, if you got the autograph connection, got hat connection, Which, don't you? Right. Why not? Who, who, Why yeah, not? Yeah, who's your supplier? I don't know if we're not allowed to do this live on the show. Who's your guy? Don't, I don't you do, do like I all these awesome giveaways? I okay, can't do that. Enough. Okay. Can, but well, after the after I can. Okay, I, can I appreciate you. that. What a guy. If it makes you feel any better, I don't even know who's supplier. No. He, he won't tell oh, me. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. Well, and you guys do a show <laughs> together. Yeah, yeah. There you go. I'm gun I'm gunny supplier. And I'm adding another guy, and hopefully I'll add you eventually. But I, yes, I love it. I love sports memorabilia. I've been getting autographs since I was seven years old, and wow. jersey since I was seven years old. So I love it. Trade and product. I can appreciate that. Exactly. Respect. Yes. Exactly. You sent me a couple things. You have sent me yeah. a couple things. I got okay. some. Uh, did he give you a solid more. discount? Did he go like five percent or like for you? Yeah. Did he charge you more? Did he say no. like yeah, yeah no, like this is a hundred bucks? Did not. No, I'm your friend. That's a hundred and twenty. <laughs> I thought we were just at a hundred. What happened? What the? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh. That could be. Yeah. Oh, here we go. You're giving him ideas. I I'd see. Yeah, I, I apologize for that. What here, we got? Here's Dart. Oh. Forget rock star lifestyle. Italy lives in. An egomaniacal. Hey, yeah. hey, hey. Okay, hey, as much as wrong. I'd like to make fun of Italy here, look above me. There is a picture. It's hard to see with the, the, I the see it, particular though. lighting I in the room. It. I was just at my college. Uh, my brain, yeah. I got hit. I've been hit too many times in the head with Taekwondo. But, like, this picture behind Same me, with soccer. I, I, get I was, uh, you know, so I did this whole spiel where I went to, I spoke, you know, to all these classes and stuff at my college and all these kids and everything. And then, like, so after there's like an after party and then you head into like this banquet room and then I'm standing in front of this sign that's right here. And I'm just like, you know, kissing baby signing autographs. Yeah, I'm handsome. I know. Thank you. I will tell you more about myself. So like how ego maniacal can you get? I got one of these. I got the banner behind me, right? The the boy green action. I'm trying to see sick helmet that I wish they would bring back. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Please. Yeah. That's a whole New York sack exchange autograph, helmet, which is nice. Won that in an auction. That's beautiful. Uh, got a safari Italy has like seven of those, I'm sure. Yeah, right? I bet he does. It, actually, like he he does. He probably is. You know, again, we we got to get on the same page as far as that's concerned. And uh, yeah, so I got a lot of jet stuff. But uh, ego maniacal, come on, man. Like, look at this. I got a picture of myself great. behind me live on another show. I mean, it's it's a little. I intense. love it. I respect it. I respect it. <laughs> that's I mean, he I mean, just have four. I guess. I mean, I have one I mean why not? Yeah, why not? Yeah, that, that's a good point. That's fair. It's a brand. It's a brand. You're confident in your brand, and you love what you do, right, Paul? Yeah. You love yeah, it. Yeah, it, it is. It does feel like it's being forced down my throat. I'm going to be honest with that many Italy <laughs> jets, but I can respect <laughs> the aggressiveness. I can absolutely respect the aggressiveness. Yes. Well, it's funny because I do Jets content, I do Boston Red Sox content, and I oh, do West okay. Ham content. Wow. So, and now I'm about That's to do these... Miami Heat. Okay. So. Oh. It's, I'm sorry to hear that because the Celtics yeah. are taking out the heat. I just want to no, make no, 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 no. They're no, absolutely no. taking out the heat. No, 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 no. Doing no. that again, but <laughs> perhaps a different show. <laughs> perhaps a different. I have show. a new nickname for Italy. He he really is like the Streamyard whore because he's just all over uh, Streamyard. Oh, oh wow! Yeah, love it. 
Oh, look at that. <laughs> look at that. Thank you, Turbulence. We appreciate you and love you. Um, oh, DK, if if it's merchandise, Gino's, Gino has it. I do. I yes. Do. Yeah. It's everywhere. Mm. But, Paul, listen, We I think we should give a round of applause, honestly, to this. We got six prime time oh, look at that. games. Juicy. Mm. I mean, when's that the last great. time? When's the last time we we had six prime time games? Are you well never for this? Are well, you that, pumped for this, or is this something you're not looking forward to because of all the uncertainty with the scheduling and <laughs> if we get an injury? Do you like all this attention though? So I'll answer your first question first. Uh, it has never happened because uh, the primetime uh, schedule changed. Hello, Zariah, my little rubber ducky, uh, running in here, uh, my little daughter. Um, yeah, sorry, it's not off. Hello. Um, uh, so we've never had it because uh, the primetime max used to be five. So right. uh, so six is, is historic for the Jets anyway. Other teams, I'm sure, have uh, flirted with that since the rules changed. But uh, they have six, and they can have more with the flex opportunities. So there's they right. can't be flexed into another Thursday night game. Uh, th- that is still being discussed. We'll see if the second owner's meeting later here in May, that is approved. Uh, even if it is approved, the Jets can't. They have two short weeks because they have the Thursday night football game, which is the Browns game, and the Black Friday game, which obviously is on Friday. So they cannot be flexed to a Thursday night game, but there's a chance later in the season to be flexed to a, another Sunday night or another Monday night. So there could be seven. But to answer your second part of your question, I'm going to be honest, I'm somewhat insulted by it. The people that what? have this stupid loser's mentality of, I don't know, the schedule stuff, suck it up, Sally. I mean, oh my <laughs> goodness. I'm like, not complaining about it. I, no, know I, know you're not, I, I know I'm shooting the messenger here, but I just have to say that like the comments I'm seeing in the streets make me sick. It's mm, disgusting. Yeah. I'm like, we've been begging for, you know, opportunities forever. We get one stinking opportunity last year, which by the way, sucked. It was the week 16 Jaguars game. We had all this hype and CJ mostly uh-huh. comes out with a Bane mask and we're hyped up. I was like, there. I yeah, was, yeah, I'm, I'm so sorry there. to hear that. Like, I'm sure I'm not sorry for the pregame because the pregame looked phenomenal on television. I can only imagine what it was there at the stadium. Uh, like, believe it or not, uh, go, on yeah. my way there, I got a flat tire, so I missed the entire pregame. Oh, the best yeah, part, I, unfortunately. I, I'm walking cool. into the stadium. I hear the stadium rocking. I so I missed the Quinn and Williams play, like the fumble. Oh, geez. I walk into the stadium. It's pouring rain, and it's just downhill from there. Yeah. Oh, man, that is horrible for you. But in terms of yeah. I, I to answer you, Italy, I freaking love like sign me up. Like that's the thing that pissed me off. I sent out the clip of Alan Hahn, who does ESPN stuff. Yes. And he was on television and he said, like, man, why couldn't we have gotten the commanders? And to me, I just it irks me, man. I felt like when the Jets got Aaron Rodgers, there'd be a respect level. There would be a like, you know, gamesmanship, like we're ready to go. We've got Aaron Rodgers, but like people are whining and begging on national television for the Washington commanders. Give me Buffalo. (laughs) Give me Kansas city. Give me the Dallas Cowboys, which is a game I'm going to be at in week two in Dallas. Like give me that inject it into my veins. I want the opportunities. I want the chance to punch Buffalo in the mouth week one and be in first place in the AFC East week four, the Kansas city chiefs, what some people are calling the best game of the season, the best game of the season that multiple television networks were fighting for. Jets Cowboys, multiple television networks were fighting for. Jets Bills, multiple television networks were fighting for from everything I've heard. Like, what are we talking about here? Sign me up. And right, to the point, Italy, and I get the back half of the question, like, because what if something happens and then all of a sudden, uh, unfortunate right. Jet fans are, you know, um, almost forced into action of watching their team. If something goes South, sure. Is that possible? Yeah. But injuries can right. happen to any of us. I could get hit. I could have got hit by a bus before this interview and all the hubbub and hype of boy Grimm being on the show would have been nothing. Cause I would have been gone, but you guys still would have had to come on and let maybe a <laughs> RIP boy green logo on the screen, perhaps with all the graphics on this show. Yeah. Like, I don't know, like the show goes on. So like, Sure. Right. Can an injury happen? Of course. But to me, I've always been a glass half full guy in life. You don't you don't control the cards you're dealt, but you control how you respond to the adversity you're given in life. So I'm ready. Buckle up. I'd love to roll out the ball right now against the Buffalo Bills, but I'm going to try to really enjoy this offseason process. we got the Hall of Fame game. It's going to kick off the preseason. The Jets are getting hard knocks. It's not official, but they're going to get hard knocks. I'm going to enjoy really? that. You, so I'm you think really so? going to savor the flavor, yeah. 100%. Guaranteed, they're getting hard enough. So I feel emphatic about that. So I'm going to really enjoy this process. 
but I can't wait for the season. And I am so excited to change my one o'clock schedule of going to the sandwich shop and doing this and doing that. Like, let's go prime time. Let's enjoy the NFL games that are on the calendar. And then at nighttime, flip on the lights. The Jets are playing. Like, I'm so freaking lit. I'm so excited. I'm fired up. I hope that's palpable. I, I agree with everything you said. And, yeah. and, and if you were to get hit by a bus, I think me and Italy, we, we would definitely get a jersey up on Italy's back wall of an RIP boy green. Right. Well, it would probably be R.I.P. <laughs> Boy Green 22. Like, I wouldn't even get my 25 number on there because we got this ego maniac up there. But, no, like, 2-2 two, two, because he'd be like, there's two wheels in the front of the bus, two wheels in the back of the bus. Boop, boop, the human speed bump that I would have meant. This I is suppose. your second time coming on. That's so. it. There's another two. There's so many twos. We can, like, we can like will the twos into existence. Wow. But uh, I appreciate that, Liam. You going out of your way to uh, place that level of immortality for me to live on forever, regardless of my limb carcass getting hit by a bus. That means the world. <laughs> I, I really like this. I really like this comment, though. Yeah. Um, give us all the teams up front while everyone is healthy so we don't have to hear about injuries because we won. Yeah. Th- this is the That's attitude true. that we need. Everyone's yeah. so afraid to play Patrick Mahomes and uh, you know Josh Allen twice and all the the Eagles. I'm not afraid of it. If anything, I want I want to know what the uh, the Chiefs are all about before we play them later on in the playoffs at home. Yeah, and to me, I'll even take it a step further that uh, the Jets, according to some of the strength of schedule numbers, and again, you can interpret different numbers for different things, but the Jets entering it had the sixth toughest schedule in the NFL. And to me, again, you can embrace that whatever way, like, oh, man, the NFL screwed us. Or like, to me, yeah. like, awesome, phenomenal. Now, yeah. like last year, do you remember all the people chirping? You're only beating backups. You're only beating backups. By the way, I didn't give a crap whether it was backup, third string, your mama, my mama, I don't care. I will beat anybody to get to the playoffs. And we don't pick the opponents we just play them as is however right. with that being said if i had the choice line up i want patrick Mahomes. i want blaine gabbard in week four or uh cooper rush against the guy like bring on your best and let's have our best because i think there is a i don't even know what the right word is going to say masculinity but that's not the right word that like this like mana warrior spirit that like when you beat another team at their best you must absorb their spirit into your own making you even stronger and you even more powerful as you're going through a season as you're getting pelts on the wall collecting opponent beatdowns because then instead of people like looking at you as a fraud or a pretender because of like well you beat them but this you beat them but this i don't want any excuses so the, the Jets yeah. played the two Super Bowl teams within a three-week span before the bye week. So, like, you know, we're going to buckle the chin strap and find out. So, Yeah, I love it because right before the bye, God forbid something goes haywire, we have the bye where we can kind of, like, recuperate. Historically, sure. I mean, th- this isn't a historically season, but historically we have been terrible after the bye. So, you know, so let's hope that that all changes. But let's just hope that everything goes right as planned. We're kicking ass all throughout the season. And, uh we don't need this buy to, to kind of get right. We can just get right right from the beginning. A hundred percent. So yeah, what what a week seven buys. So that's fine with me. That's uh, there, there's been earlier buys. There's been later buys. I'm fine with that. That says that's relatively in the middle. I know it's not exactly in the middle, but that's uh, that's very, that's uh, more than fine. He's coming after your uh, helmet back there. I see that. I, I noticed it. Like I said, I, I won it in a, and it was a, um, we have some local sports person somewhere in the general area in New York, like a, within a couple hours. And uh, a friend told me, because I do radio during the day, a friend of the show texted me and said, hey, there's this cool New York sack exchange helmet thing. There's like, I don't know, 15 people. Everyone throws in 20 bucks. And then they randomly pick a number and someone who paid 20 bucks gets a helmet. I'm like, well, that sounds like a win-win. Like it's 20 bucks. I would rather not like 20 bucks on fire, but if there's a chance to get that, that'd be totally worth it. I win it and I couldn't believe it. The box comes into this whole box open reveal and uh, it's a beautiful cherished memory. uh, Part of the collection for sure. I got a lot of, I'm humbled to have a lot of really cool. I'm looking at it as I'm looking around, a man cave over there or bat or like reflection to the stuff behind me. Like I, I am blessed to have a lot of really cool memorabilia stuff. So that is certainly up there. I love that. I love that. Liam, do you got any more questions for board? Green? Yes. I yeah. Wanna, fire off, baby. It, what do we respect, got? respect your time. I know we're a little bit over, but no, no, that's okay. Uh, if you guys got some more questions, I can fire them off. I, I could talk it. to you for hours. So that's, that's beautiful. Well, yeah, whatever's on your mind. I, I got you guys. Sure. So well, just I, I guess I'll, I guess my last question will be uh, yeah, what are your overall predictions for this upcoming season? The schedule just came out. Do you have a record prediction? Super Bowl? What are you thinking here? Uh, yeah. 
So uh, let's see. Uh, I do, again, because Italy mentioned it as well, I do too many shows. But one of the shows I do every <laughs> Monday during the off season is this thing called The Sick Podcast of Boy Grants in my Twitter bio. Yes. And the Twitter yes. handle is. And basically, the gist of that, and hopefully I could get you guys on, actually. Uh, yeah, thanks next, for the invite. Uh, in the, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's actually been, it's been, a, it's harder than you think to try to get someone booked on a singular day of a week with only a certain time. Because we have this, it's a long story short, I don't want to get too off into the weeds. But there's a third party that hosts it. So, like you guys are hosting the stream yard, there's this third party place that hosts all of my shows and they edit it and do all that stuff behind the scenes. And I just talk in front. And uh, so it's a lot more complicated to get guests than I would have thought. So, that, that part has been a challenging part of the process. But a big thing for me when they offered the opportunity, I said, man, it'd be a cool way for me to make sure I talk to fellow Jets content creators on a normal basis because it's so hard during my normal run of content because I have all these guests and normal things that are hitting on a day to day basis. That's complicated. Yeah. So, to like force myself every Monday, in this case during the off season, to talk about it. So, I'd love to get you guys on. We'll see what your Monday schedules are. We'll talk off air, my people, your people try to Definitely. figure that out. Um, so I'd love to do that. But so I had jet central on earlier today for this Monday and the episodes out and I gave my official prediction. It's 13 and four. I have the mm. jets winning the AFC East. I have it's them like going 13 side. and four, which by the way is the most, would be the most regular season wins in jets history. The, yeah. the number is 12 in 1998. That's a record. The Jets have never yep. won 12 games outside of that single season. So I have them winning the most regular season wins of all time. Like I said, which would be uh, 13. So I have them going 13 and four. And then the four losses. Let me see if I can remember them off the top of my head. It was Broncos, which was just kind of a weird trap game after starting the season 4-0, which is good. You beat the Chiefs and Cowboys and all those teams. But you, I had them losing to the Broncos. The Eagles, so those ones were back to back, and then splitting with the Bills and Dolphins. So those random four losses, as we see on the screen. So I had, yeah. So you see, and, and the Jet schedule goes left to right. So let me just make sure I get my math right. So week one, two, three, four, five. So week five and six, they play at the Broncos, and then back home against the Eagles. I had them losing back to back again. Trap game of Broncos sandwiched in between Chiefs and Eagles, and the Eagles are really good. They go into the bye week. They go on this run of winning all these games. They split with Buffalo. I had them winning the first one, losing the second one, winning the first Dolphins. Black Friday game at home and then losing the second one. And then, like I said, you get to a 13 and four record. You win the division and we're kissing baby signing autographs. So that's uh, that was my prognostications 13 and four AFC East. And of okay. course, they're winning the Super Bowl, baby. Obviously, yes, they're going all yes. the way. That's what that's why you make a move. Hey, well, if they make the playoffs, I'll be it. fine. If it. they win a game, I'll be fine. Hell no, we go to win the whole damn thing. That's why you get Aaron Rodgers. That's right. That's absolutely right. Yes. Italy. Same, same here. I, I think eleven and six, and I think, and I think we will win the division. I don't. I eleven really, and six. Eleven and six, okay. and I think we'll win the division. The only thing that I could see us in competition with it, honestly, is Buffalo might make a late stretch or the Dolphins, because I know the Dolphins have had some very key pieces. What about New England? Season. You didn't mention them. I noticed. Uh, I don't even know Weird. who that is. Um, ah, I, I oh, I know. see. Yeah, I don't, just I don't like know. the Elmo thing earlier. Yeah, I guess. right. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Understood. Understood. Hey, great minds think alike. But yes, I I can't see New England do anything. I yeah. I yeah. It, it's I mean, and Belichick's getting old. Like, damn, he is. He, he, yeah, he's yeah, old, late seventies, right? Balls. Yeah, late yeah, 70s, oh, yeah. Let, me, like yeah let me look that up. He's probably at the top of my head, like seventy. 79? 79? 71. So, okay, he's younger oh, than we thought. Wow. And he I just he turned 71 70. in April, a month ago. So he's only 71, although 71 still old as hell, too. But 71, right. yes. Is yeah, my, my dad's been saying that he's been waiting for Belichick to croak on the sideline for the last 20 years. So <laughs> yeah. Jesus. That is exactly. dark, but I can respect it. Yes. But and, uh, I do I do, I do understand. Do I do yeah, understand that Belichick when he's there, like you can't count him out because we have a losing winning streak against him. So I get that. Right. But yeah. overall, just a losing streak <laughs> against them. Yeah, 13 in a row or something. Yes. Something like that. And then it's like, now we're at 14. 14. Now, so. and, and it's like 22 of 24. Like the jets have only won like two games against new England, in like the last 24, 25 games. It's something like that. Like I knew the number. So I should just add two since the Jets got swept again last year. But like I knew the number was something like that of losses in a row and then the losses of losses. Like I said, 22 of 24 or something like that. Yeah. By the way, I saw the random DK question. No, I don't. I think the coin has died. 
Maybe not. Maybe oh. he, I mean, he could try the coin guy, you know, the big coin guy. So like we had right. that forever. Right. It just feels right. like a once in a lifetime thing. Maybe it happens again and then put the coin in the hall of fame for God's sakes. But uh, Italy, I, I remember you that, hated that guy. Oh my yeah. God. I hated everything with that damn coin. Yeah. I, I can't, I can't do it. I'm, 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 that I don't was kind of crazy. What was that? 13, 14 weeks or something. That's unbelievable. It, it, it had a long stretch of good. And then, then they yeah, dropped sure. back down to life after the bears game. So <laughs> yeah. Tough, 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 man, tough. All right, Italy. But, I cut you off when you were talking about New England, so I'm sorry. Oh yes, yes. I so well, with New England, like I said, you know, you don't know what they're gonna do. They might go on and get Hopkins again. Like they could make a trade any time now. You never know. I don't think so. Bill O'Brien but, 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 and Hopkins. That'd be interesting. But yeah. Belichick is sneaky like that. It's like the Steelers were sneaky with us in the draft. And so the Patriots. With what? Like, who does he have to throw to? Uh, exactly. Juju's what if Schuster? Jackie and Jones? If he's not doing TikTok to? dances on the side. What the hell? I'm not afraid of New England. They suck. That yeah. team freaking sucks. Like the defense. Okay, that's respectable. And Belichick is a defensive mastermind. And the offense can't be worse. I mean, whatever that weird Matt Patricia Joe Judge baby was was disturbing. <laughs> so I guess Bill O'Brien at at a like it's like the honeymoon after Adam Gase. Like Robert Tyler couldn't be worse than Gase was. So like it yeah. was all uphill from that standpoint. But come on, like there's no freaking way. I feel like the bottom falls out for New England. We've probably been saying that a long time, but like there's no exactly. way. There's no way this offense stinks. They suck. Yeah, unbelievable. Good. Good. Mm. Uh, let's keep it like that, but yeah, but it's still the Patriots. So I yeah. will always be a little, like, not a little on edge, but just like I'm not gonna go past them unless we win that damn game. We win we one game against them. If we win one against them, then I'm like, oh fuck it, we're gonna take the take it this year, two in yeah. a row, and then we're good. There you go. Like I said, well, I mean, we, that, we blew three. both yeah. games last year. It's, it's not that they we necessarily did. beat us. We picked six, and then we couldn't move the ball an inch. That's right. it. Pick six, and then, that and punt. then the yeah, the punt. And, but uh, but uh, you could say the punt, which is fine. And I was at a bar for that, and that was that was incredibly difficult to watch in a public setting. Uh, there was the punt, but like I said, the not moving the ball an inch when the Jets had the ball third and whatever it was, two, they went to shotgun. I was kind of weirded out, and Zach Wilson missed a wide open Elijah. Like he didn't even not missed him, like he missed the throw, like missed him, like he didn't see him. Or it, it, that's a first down, the Patriots never get the chance at the punt return. So, like, they couldn't move the ball in that second game, and then you had the pick six that completely flipped the game on a garbage JFM call. So, like, it just man, it just sucks. It sucks. We have a question for you in the chat here. Boy okay, Green, is sure. it fair to say if we don't win with this roster, this team will never figure it out? That's an interesting question. I've not been asked that. If the boy, is it fair to say if we don't win with this roster? Yeah, I mean, because here's the thing. Every year the roster changes. So, like, if your other question, I saw another person randomly say here that, like, you know, the difference between this or this is coaching. Like, I I think coaching is bigger than just a one-win differential. So, whether 12-5 and five to 11-6, I think it's I bigger than that. I but, agree. But just to the point, though, that, like, will we ever figure it out? Then the only question, if you didn't figure out with this roster, outside of injuries, of course, which is always a factor, then it would have to be coaching is the reason because this Jets defense was top four last year. You add Aaron Rodgers and you won seven games in spite of your quarterback. So going from 32nd at quarterback in a 32 team league, maybe 33rd out of 32 teams, which I don't know if that's physically possible, but if they were 33rd in quarterback, okay, compared to Aaron Rodgers, who's like a top three quarterback, like that has some difference to me. And then you consider everything else. Like if you don't win with this, you must have the worst coaching staff in the league if that's the case. So, like, yes, uh, all the pressure is on these coaches to be able to make the difference because you, the players are right now. The defense is right. The quarterback is right. Facts. All these skill positions are right. Like, coaching is what will be able to separate this team or not separate this team. So that'll be interesting in key moments because Robert's always effed uh, clock management before. Like if that rears its ugly head, that's going to be a tough pill for Jet fans to mm. swallow. Say, wow, we've constructed this perfect roster and air riders and nothing's perfect, but relatively speaking to be able to flip this around, we got this really, really talented, deep roster and the coaches are blowing it. That would be a hard thing for Jet fans to ever forgive an organization for. So, yeah, there is some true serum to this uh, by Jets Turbulence podcast. All right, guys. Mm. All right. 
I man, I I totally agree with you. Not enough there on the guarantees. I would just say. I saw Melvin drop in, so twenty six million average. That's fine, but like the sixty five million guaranteed isn't enough. I think it's going to be seventy five million uh, fully guaranteed, which will be the largest guarantee in Jets history. So, uh, and at that position, correct, right at defensive tackle. So uh, factor all that in there. I think uh, I think all that's important. Have a good See you dark. Yep. Yeah, peace. Right, Big factor I've seen is the head coach specialty. How many of the last 10 Super Bowl teams had an offensive head coach? The mentality is different. Again, I get why people say, and that's why reportedly one of the reasons the Jets forced the square peg with Adam Gaze is if you get a defensive guy, as the Jets got in Salah and then got LaFleur, if the LaFleur is good or bad, as we found out, and you remove him from the puzzle, your QB could be effed. If the head coach is offense, then you never have to worry about that leaving because he will be there as long as the head coach is there. But to me, again, at the end of the day, I want a leader of men. It, I don't right. give a flying hoot if your label is offense, defense. Harbaugh in Ravens land was a former special teams guy. So, like, right. I think sometimes labels are overrated. People can look at those kind of factors in the last 10 Super Bowls, say this, that, or indifferent to me. Is he a leader of men? And I believe in Robert Ty. I believe he's a leader of men. I believe he's cut from the right cloth. And Nathaniel Hackett has had success, especially with Aaron Rodgers. So I'm not worried about those pieces of the puzzle. I agree. I agree. I agree. Boy, Green, man, we appreciate you being on the show. Where can we find you real quick, my man? Of course. I try to make it as simple as possible. It's at Boy Green 25 everywhere. We're back team verified today, so it's great to be back a part of uh, – Yeah, I saw that. Check. Good for yeah. you, buddy. Yeah, well, it was kind of weird because, like, I saw it uh, in 2021 or something like that. That's when I first became verified. They just thought, you know, hey, you're a big deal. Uh, that's cool to hear uh, back in those days. And uh, so I had that. So it's nice to be uh, back on the verified side. So you guys can, of course, hit me up on Twitter. That's where I'm most active. That's my biggest social media following. But uh, right number two is uh, the YouTube. So youtube.com slash boygreen25. It's in my Twitter bio. If you guys can subscribe, I'd appreciate it. We're closing in on 5,000 subscribers. So we're like 100-ish away, something like that. So we're just grinding, baby. There. We're grinding. So, yeah, any help on that would be great. Again, www.youtube.com slash or at. That's a new thing on YouTube. So either at Boy Green 25 or slash Boy Green 25. Feel free uh, for you guys to check it out on YouTube. I'd appreciate it. And we appreciate we're gonna have you, the. Man. We're getting you. Don't worry. Check your mail. The Boy Green 22 jerseys on Sway. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you. I ha I do not have a boy green 22 Jersey. I have a Dejet Jersey. That's a, my dad was a big Emmett Smith fan. And uh -oh. so I had the 22 from him, but I was a jet fan. So he put 22 on a jet Jersey for me, which was kind of an ode to like Justin Miller days. But mm -hmm. so I do have a 22 buried in the closet, the old school stealth black, but I would, yes, Italy. I appreciate the 22. Apparently that's no in the problem. mail right now. Thank you for that. No I problem. much appreciate no it. There's Thanks. a lot of surprises tonight, so it'll Apparently, be yeah. it'll be it'll be okay. interesting off screen. But yeah. um, guys, thank you so much for for coming on the show, Paul. We appreciate you, man. We'll have you more down the line on the show. Awesome. Definitely collabing, and also just a great year. Let's have a great year with the Jets and stuff, guys. Come comment, share, subscribe, and like to our podcast. You can follow Liam if you want to follow Liam. You don't have to, but it on Instagram. And he's right here, and then me, Italy Jet. I'm on these social media platforms. Come follow us. We are now not going to come back next week. Me and Liam. Liam's going on vacation. I'm going on vacation. I'm going to Panama City Beach. He's going wow. near Buffalo. I'm going to enjoy my time off. Who got Liam the best of that bet? Let me just say that. I, I Who did. got the best I of those get the vacation best. spots? Yeah. Yikes. But anywho. But definitely. <laughs> definitely. We'll be back the week after that at the end of May, early June. But, guys, thank you so much. Paul, appreciate you as usual. Liam. Have a good night, everyone. Go Jets.